Hello and welcome to my second video looking at penguin specials. So this time we're going to be having a look from number 100 to number 200. So we see the very tail end of the war years and then when the specials were relaunched in the early 60s from about number 156 I think it is up to number 200. So that's going to be the subject of today's video. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Right then, so this is pretty much where we left off. This was uh, Penguin Special number 100, which was Nora Wayne's Reaching for the Stars. Now this one uh, was published back in uh, 1942. So we are um, starting to see the books become extremely fragile, although this is one of the thicker ones, um, extremely fragile due to the uh, wartime paper rationing that was in place in Britain at that time. Um, so consequently, um, some of these are absolutely uh, uh, real scarcities these days and um, I'm, well I really count myself lucky to have some so uh, this is the very next one so this is uh, keeping poultry and rabbits on scraps and this is another one uh, penguin 101 special 101 that's particularly difficult to find in nice condition um, obviously in Britain at this time people will be encouraged encouraged to like grow your own and um, uh, keep uh, poultry and chickens and pigs and things like that and consequently con consequently it makes this one quite a tricky one to get your hands on um, this was also the first penguin special um, that got released later on re-released later on as a penguin handbook um, and this one is december 1941 that one was published um, so if you ever come across that one it is particularly rare and i do suggest you uh you pick it up because it's rare um, so then we got number 102, which is Guerrilla Warfare by Yank Levy. This was a, an American one. This is number 102, very thin little, thin little book, that one. Obviously, all the uh, adverts in these are wartime related because that was, uh, you know, <laughs> these are, this is wartime. Um, and uh, it was just appropriate. Another sort of um, grow your own uh, sort of style book, number 103, Speed the Plow aimed at the, uh, the average man becoming a bit of a farmer and the nation as a whole becoming more uh, self-sufficient. 104, Christianity and the Social Order, Archbishop of York. This is number 105, The British Way in Warfare. Uh, this is a revised edition of this one. Uh, once again, quite a scarce one to get your hands on this. Um, uh, although it's quite robust, so it's not one of the really fragile wartime ones, but you can see how really thin the paper is. You can, if you held it up to the light, you could almost see right through it. It's that fragile. And this is once again 1942, but it did come out right at the start of the war and uh, was updated uh, before publication as a Penguin special, which Penguin used to do quite a bit. They would encourage their authors to add a new chapter or just revise it slightly so they had a bit of an edge and it was uh, marketed as a new book. Um, what a special 106 is the German Librosum, Liebros I think you pronounce it. And then we've got 107, Health of the Future, Alec Bourne. Quite a nice copy, that one, for its age. That was a Penguin original. Interesting on some of these now, they start using slightly different typefaces than what we're used to. Um, not a fan of that particular sort of style of cover. Um, WB Such, and this is uh, The Quest for Security in New Zealand. That's number 108. Quite a fragile one, that, so being careful with some of these. Uh, another sort of uh, one with a religious bent, which is um, Is Christ Divided? Number 109, the Archbishop of Canterbury. And 110, this is one of the first specials I remember getting from that sort of wartime period, which is how Russia prepared the USSR beyond the Urals. I just love this advert on the back. I've sewn all those buttons on, mummy. And the reward, a grand reward for special occasions was a, a box of uh, 
a box of more teasers there. The other one I used to like was uh, the Mars bars. Not that particular Mars bar one, but there's, I think it's on a lot of the puffins of the period where they encourage you to cut your Mars bar into segments and reward it for like good behavior and uh, digging up the lawn <laughs> alongside, of course, the obligatory advert for cigarettes. Um, so that was 110. This is 111, a dictionary of science. Uh, once again, you could almost have said this might have been a pelican, uh, a pelican special, but they decided to release it as a normal penguin. Then we got uh, Savile Snee's second book of aircraft recognition. So these were, if you remember the first video, these were incredibly popular and it was a massive, massive seller. So it was only right that Penguin would follow it up and double down as it were with a, a second book of aircraft recognition. Um, if anything, this one's even harder to get than the first book. Um, but this is actually a, a particularly nice copy of this one. So I'm quite, quite pleased to have this one. Cadbury's ad right there, 1942 again. Yeah, nice little book, that one. And um, I've got a, another copy of it. And all I can think of, this one isn't such good condition. All I can think of is I've picked this one up because it might be a revised edition possibly. And that's why I've still got it in my collection. Yeah, so this is the first reprint in October of 1942. So sometimes with particularly scarce books or even the aircraft recognition ones, I, I like to have an extra copy um, or if it's um, significantly different simply because um, it's nice to see the differences. So this one here, look at that, the cover's folded over. Oh dear, yeah. That just shows you in, in for all the world to see how fragile some of these penguin specials are. So this is number 113, Modern Battle. I'm not gonna even open that one any further because it's so fragile on the cover there. I'll pop that little bit in there. I might be able to glue that back on. But that's one where it looks like I need to get an upgrade. But that is what they're like, they're so, so fragile. This one, however, look at that, a fantastic, much, much better condition. And this is an ABC of the Pacific, number 114, Dorothy Woodman. So this is a, once again, a really sharp copy. Um, I seem to remember when I started collecting penguins back in the 80s, um, uh, there was a penguin book dealer who I used to just love it when his catalogues um, came through the door. And that was a chap called Brian Kesterton. And I remember speaking to him because he bought a collection, <clears throat> excuse me, from a, a person who'd worked at Penguin from the very early days. He was a warehouse man and um, he had pretty much every single Penguin that had been published, every single one. And um, a lot of them were in fantastic brand, almost brand new condition, a bit like that one. Um, some of them were signed by him just on the inside cover, which that one I see wasn't, but I did buy a fair few from that very collection. And I remember them because they were just so outstandingly beautiful uh, condition-wise. And so I'm wondering if that might have come from that collection. Next one, we've got one in an oblong format, which is uh, number 115, which is uh, The World at War. Um, once again, it's another collection of cartoons by the artist uh, Lowe from the, is it the London Evening Standard? Um, history, uh, The World at War history in 60 cartoons. Um, 1942, yeah, uh, that were first printed in the London Evening Standard. So this is, um, as you would expect, you know, he, he was quite famous for doing these sort of caricatures um, of what was happening during the war. And they're excellent. And I do love these, uh, these little wartime cartoon books. So that was 115. 116 is Marcel Hoden, A Diary of World Affairs, uh, The Three Last Aggressions. And this is volume two, April to December, 1941. 117 is People in Production. So an inquiry into British war production. So this is another one, which is like a follow-up because look, a report prepared by Mass Observation for the Advertising Service Guild. So uh, if you remember in the last video, there was a mass observation book just called Britain in Mass Observation. Once again, this is an absolutely fascinating glimpse of what different aspects of the British population were doing at this snapshot in time. Um, and they're fantastic. They're really, really fantastic. Another little thing to note, this is quite nice as well. Got the for the forces. So leave this book at the post office when you've read it so that men and women in the services may enjoy it too. So 
you could buy this, read it, hand it back into the post office, and it would get recycled to uh, the services service personnel overseas, which is uh, really nice. Next one then is number 118, uh, Warfare by Words, Ivor Thompson, uh, Thomas rather. Very, very thin little book, this one. Chances are this was once again, it was 96 pages, but it was probably an expanded magazine article pop or a collection of magazine articles, which was then popped into a Penguin special. Another really nice copy, that one. Now, these are the ones that seem to be the hardest for me to, to pick up. Um, this is 119, which is soft fruit growing. So this would also be um, uh, republished later on um, in a revised edition. Um, and this would be the very first Penguin Handbook. So Penguin Handbook number one. Um, I'm not a massive you know, collector of the Penguin Handbooks. I've got a handful, uh, maybe about 20 or so uh, various ones. Some of them are beautiful covers, some of them very, very plain and boring. So I haven't ever concentrated on getting the handbooks, but um, maybe I'll pop them into a, a video at some point with some pelicans and things, just so you can have a look and see what I've got. Because some of the covers are lovely, but most of them are a bit on the dull side. Um, number 120, this is another scarce one, Young Citizen by A.E. Morgan. Um, you just don't see these around very often. You just, uh, I mean, these are some of these I would class as rare. Um, and very, very pleased to have this one in, in nice nick considering when it was published, which is uh, 1943. And you see the size of these are very, very thin. Uh, another early one, um, 121, Science and World Order. One, two, two. The Future of Medicine, D. Stark Murray. One, two, three is Tomorrow Hitler's by H.R. Knickerbocker. Oh, what a name, Knickerbocker. Super thin one, this one. So this is number one, two, four. And it's what about business? So this is how business has been affected by the war. This is interesting. It's got a, like a government, um, well, not a government notice, but it's, it's like a trade notice, open letter to retail tradesmen. Look at that on the back. You don't see that on any other penguin. War bonds on the back, war savings. Interesting, eh? These are very, very good. What the Church Teaches, Bishop of Bradford. So another religious title here for number 125. 126 is The People's War by Tom Whittingham. Now the next one is also super rare. I mean, it's rare. And this is number 127, which is the wartime Good Housekeeping Cookery Book. And uh, I've had a couple of copies of this through my hands. Um, for many years, I had a copy that I got from a boot sale um, and it had no cover at all. But I picked it up and I thought, well, I'm gonna keep it because it's so rare. Eventually a nice one came along and I, uh, um, I scanned the front jacket and popped it onto my old one. And that's in the hands of another collector now. Um, super rare, I think really top condition copies of this will probably go close upwards of 30, 40 pounds. One in this state, perhaps about 20 to 25, but just based on its rarity alone, um, you would never struggle to get rid of that if you ever wanted, because it is so, so rare. Um, now, number 128 is <laughs> another, you could almost laugh at this, venereal disease in Britain. But I guess you have to consider there was Americans over here, over in the UK, and it was um, an era of promiscuousness with men overseas. Um, quite an interesting um, advert on the back from the Ministry of Health. The classic coughs and sneezes spreads diseases. Trap the germs in your handkerchief, help to keep the nation fighting fit. So that's very, very rare. Um, and it's almost like a, look, a promoting diphtheria an immunization for the Ministry of Health. So this really was, you can imagine, this is sort of the book that many a soldier would have been given to sort of get him thinking. And look at this on the back, all the sort of uh, health education books on the subject. Interesting, eh? 
Look at this. Look at that. a highlight. Uh, syphilis. There's a chapter on gonorrhea. <laughs> there you go. So the penguin. There was nothing the penguin specials wouldn't cover. Um, so another one, nice one now. This is a S129, which is an HG Wells original. So we saw a few of these on the last video, and it's a crooks and and Stata, an indictment of the Roman Catholic Church by HG Wells. Are we still in 1943? I believe we are. Yes, it's 1943. Let's start a second, second pile there. Argument of Empire. W.K. Hancock, number 130. I am aware that these videos showing a hundred books in a series can go on a bit, a bit long, but you know, I think it's worth it. If you're ever thinking of collecting specials, um, you know, rarities and ones that if, if I've been collecting these for 30 years and I still haven't quite got the set, um, I'm still missing a couple. Um, but if you see one here and it's in pretty poor condition, it means generally speaking, it's, it's a scarce one because I've been upgrading these for years. And some of these are still on my like, upgrade list. This is 1944, perhaps the toughest year for specials. Now this one is published as um, a special, it's a special 132, but it is in fact, this is what the early Penguin Handbooks look like. Um, so it was re-released later on as a Penguin Handbook, Penguin Handbook number two, but this is the first place it was published and that was a special 132. It can be a bit confusing that, but the early handbooks are in that sort of, um, sort of apple green color, which is quite nice. Um, so the next Germany, number 133, discussions on peace in Europe. So this is quite nice. So starting to come towards the end of the war and questions are being asked about what to do next. 134, Our New Order or Hitler's? A selection by Phyllis Bottom from the speeches, so by Churchill there, Roosevelt. Anthony Eden, Perales Buck, I see. <laughs> um, and I think we've got through the worst of paper rationing now and we're coming out the other side. So although that still says 1943, so maybe we've got a little bit further to go. Um, this is a tough one. Um, this was also uh, reprinted in America um, because obviously the Pacific campaign hadn't really started quite yet um, for the Americans. And this is how the Jap army fights. It's interesting, look, some uh, Japanese, a way to identify different officers. This was another tough one to get, I seem to recall, in 1943. And um, published by the Infantry Journal. I believe I might have the American first Penguin special of that, which I'll, they'll, I'll be covering those in the next video because they are fascinating, the Fighting Forces uh, Penguin specials. This is 136, which is uh, Why Not Prosperity, A.J. Evans. Then we've got another one, which is 137, which preserves for all occasions. So this was, of course, reissued again later on as a Penguin Handbook, number 12, but first came out as a special. And exactly the same with this one, which was uh, Tree and Fruit Growing, Volume 2 also came out as Penguin Handbook number three. Then one to town, country and town. This is 139. 140 is one that I'm missing, which is rabbit farming. So I'll pop a picture of that one in, but still on my wants list. Um, 141 is God and Human Progress by John Hadman. Very, very thin little uh, volume there. Then 142 is Our Settlement with Germany. So we're looking at February 1944 now for when this one was published by Brailsford, H.M. Brailsford. And certainly the end of the war was in sight by now, but we weren't over the finish line yet. Um, so quite interesting. So I'm just going to pause ever so slightly there and make a little bit more room and so we can get on to the next lot. Okay, so this is the next one, which is number 143 and it's India 
since Crips. Very, very thin little volume, this one. That's one, four, three. Then 144, we've got poultry farming. This is another one that would later be published as a penguin handbook, penguin handbook number five. Then 145 is trees and shrubs, another penguin handbook. Um, this will be uh, also re-released later on as a penguin handbook. 146, so the vegetable growers handbook. So, um, and that's volume one and uh, that's volume two by Arthur J. Simmons. And they were obviously re-released re later on, but Penguin sought to release them as specials at this point in their, their life. Um, the next one, uh, 148, is actually a brief memorandum outlining a plan of economic development for India, which I'm missing, number 148. 149 is Miner's Day, which is a, a great little book looking at the... Uh, mining communities in Wales, amongst others, um, and their uh, role during the war. And look at this, it's got a nice little uh, dedication inside. This is a just after anniversary present. Lisa, December the 3rd, 1945. Would you get someone as an anniversary present a book on mining? I don't know. Just, just questioning that. <laughs> Number uh, 150, Lendlease. Um, uh, interesting that it got a cover price of nine pence now on the front. It's looking at the uh, Lendlease agreement. Once again, these issues are things that are uh, covering towards the end of the war now. Uh, 151 is TVA. There we are, TVA. The Tennessee Valley Authority, Democracy on the March. Now, this is almost the last original special that was published. However, because the series was revised later in 1963. So this one here then, now we're jumping, although we've got a couple of old ones to show you because I'm showing them in numerical order. So this is actually number 152. So this is the very next one. And this is looking at the Profumo affair. And this was actually the second of the modern specials. So this is 1963. All right. So that's that. But then we jump back in time to the tail end of the original one. So this is 153, which is uh, Russia and peace. Then we have uh, 154, politics made plain. What the next general election will really be about. So... Uh, so this is uh, closing in right on the very tail end of the war now. 1944 still. 155 is France and the, and the birth of the Fourth Republic. Now, this one here, 156. So this is a little bit later now. So this is... Um, uh, about f three years after the last Penguin special was published, um, Penguin sort of relaunched it again. So it says new series number one, but this actually came out um, in 1949, and this was the case for communism. And then this massive volume, number 157. See new series number two. Let's see how thick this one is. And this is I Choose Peace, with a Bernard Shaw quote on the front from the New Statesman. Massive, massive uh, tome, this one. Um, yeah, just under 500 pages, or just over 500 pages. And once again, this was in that sort of weird period between the original series and the second series in the 19, 1949. Then we jump again. So those two were numbered as a new series, but that was it. Then we jump forward another couple of years to number 158, which is Policy for the West, Barbara Ward. And this one was published in 1951. So let's go in, jumping forward in time again. Attitude to Africa, 159. This is also 1951. 
And then 1952, number 160, the communist technique in Britain. Looking at the uh, British Communist Party of the time. A lot of these uh, ones are highly political um, or religious. So 161, Kingship of Christ. This was 1954, Bishop of Chichester. 162, Peaceful Coexistence. This is 1955. This is still that sort of mid-period between the late 40s and 60s. 163, which was Communism and Christianity. 164, Spotlight on Asia. Another one I remember getting very early on in my collecting days. 1955. 165 is 20th century socialism. That's 1956 published. And 166 is Is Peace Possible? 1957. 168, the Middle East crisis. I like these ones with a little illustration on. 168, pattern of post-war world. 169, the Atom and the Energy Revolution. Uh, photograph cover there, Norman Lansdale. This is still that late sort of 50s period. So like you could almost describe this as the second run. Which is pretty good. So I just need to pause there and get some more ready to be uh, shown to you. Okay, so this is uh, number 170, which is British economic policy since the war. Quite nice there with the uh, the line there, juggling with the currencies, the dollar and the pound. Quite interested in that. These are still 1950s, late 1950s. One for the sports fans, so 60 seasons of uh, league football. Um, this is quite nice. And this is uh, just looking at the history of the uh, professional football league from its inception. Um, quite a nice uh, and collectible book, that one, on the history of uh, the football. Still in the 1950s, so the voyage of the lucky dragon. True story of uh, the Japanese fishermen who were the first victims of the H-bomb. Number 172. And on a similar vein, uh, reprinted from the main series, number 603, uh, one of my uh, favourite penguins, um, Hiroshima by John Hershey. Um, if you've never read this, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, it was originally published in the New Yorker magazine as like an extended essay. And um, Penguin got the rights, uh, um, but published it as the main series rather than as a special. But later on went back. Um, so yeah, it was published in the main series in 1946. This 1958 edition, um, is the first thus, um, and it's the first time it was released as a as a penguin special, and it's highly highly recommended. Um, I reread it recently, and it's still as good today as when I first read it um, as a kid. Uh, number one seven four then is Geography of World Affairs, and a really mint copy of that one. That's quite nice to have. Uh, we're still in this fifties uh, period here, though. So it's one seven four. Got another twenty five or so to go. 175, Disengagement in Europe, and this is 1958, nice, another nice mint one. So leading up to an election, uh, one of three Penguin specials stating the Conservative, the Labour and the Liberal points of view. This is 176, which was the, um, the Liberal case, and then you had 177, which was the uh, Labour case, with uh, written by Roy Jenkins, that one. And then 178 was the Conservative case. So that's all three parties. Um, a bit like you would buy the um, an election manifesto. Penguin put their own sort of spin on it with their version of the three, which is quite, quite nice. 179, as so we are into 1960 just now with this book on China. 
China, New Age and New Outlook, one of the first books to throw new light on the Chinese Revolution. Quite an interesting cover there with like traditional China and then their massive economy starting to uh, expand at a very swift rate. Next one, very interesting as well, number 180, Why NATO? Um, well, there you go, fantastic. One eighty, one eighty one, strategy for survival: the first steps in nuclear disarmament. So this is one, one eighty one. So this is uh, tail end of the sixties again, nineteen fifty nine. Khrushchev's Russia, one eight two. Now this one, we are. This is another one where they've. It, it's it's the next one numerically, which is one eight three tenants in danger. However, it's it's typical, and it is actually published in nineteen sixty four. This is a a sixties penguin special, um, and you'll see when we get on to those later on, and in the next video, how all the covers are very very similar to the, this sort of design. Um, and I find them absolutely fascinating, those. But that's number 183. And they've just sort of gone back and used up the number, really. Uh, 184 is the next one, sort of chronologically. Brighter than 1,000 suns. Another look at um, uh, the bomb, the atom bomb. Very uh, conscious and on people's minds at that time. And that's number 184. Now I'm going to pause the video for one last time and get the very last lot up to 200 ready to be filmed. So here's number 185, which is The Hidden Persuaders. So this one is August 1960. Quite an interesting sort of cover on this one. Of course, this, is a, this has been through the, through the wars. So PMP Book Exchange in Hastings. Doubt they're still there somehow. 1960, so still 50 years old. And that's the way you've got to look at some of these now. Um, they're quite quite aged. Uh, 186, which is America the Vincible. Study of America's role in world affairs. Emmett John Hughes. It's 186. 187 is The Organization Man. The cover was designed by Erwin Fabian. Sort of uh, early, very early 1960s sort of style. Artwork style, and that's interesting. It's got uh, the pelican motif inside, even though this is a special. Um, it was one of those ones which was uh, published um, as a special. Fantastic. So one eight seven. So it was pelican in all but name. This one's a particularly nice, bright copy of this one from nineteen sixty. Must labour lose. Special number one eight eight. Absolutely mint that one. It's funny how some of them uh, have gone through the wars and other ones aren't. So this is a, obviously this is jumping ahead a little bit again, but we're almost getting in, so to the 60s style now, so the stagnant society. And um, this is a uh, special 189. You see the, uh, this is the star of the sort of the 60s. So you can see the influence of a bit of pop art there, but Peter Blake creeping in. Um, very, very good, that one. The actual the cover was designed by someone called Richard Hollis on that one. That was 189 from 1961. This is another quite collectible one, which is number 190 from 1961. It's a look at the jazz scene. This one's uh, quite a collectible little book. One nine one, so Congo disaster. I'm not au fait with what, what the disaster actually was, but um, that's what this one's looking at. And typical of the Penguin specials where they look at issues that were topical in the news. Now, this next one is an absolute classic and um, a fascinating read, and that's um, The Trial of Lady Chatterley. Now, um, Penguin published uh, Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence and um, were then slapped with an obscenity um, case to deal with in the, in the Crown Court. And um, Alan Lane and many eminent Authors, politicians, writers of the day went to court and pleaded Penguin's case. And um, as you all know, Penguin was victorious. And uh, the entire trial was 
documented in this book, The Trial of Lady Chatterley, Regina versus Penguin Books Limited, that this book was first published as an Alan Lane Christmas book. And um, that's in a hardback, which I do have a copy of that one, um, sort of as a limited edition of 2000, which was given away to friends and people in the book trade. And um, when I cover, I've only got a few of the Alan Lane Christmas books, but when I cover those, um, I will show that one. Um, now, number 193, which is the uh, Penguin Science Survey Part 1, um, perhaps one of the, the most boring titles in the specials range, <laughs> but it can only be um, topped with uh, Part 2, which was um, this one. <laughs> okay, so that's the, the Penguin Science Survey. Then we have uh, 195, which is Life in the 21st Century. It's interesting because the cover is now glossy. Um, they've moved to sort of a, a very basic lamination. Um, obviously no sign of paper rationing now. And uh, this is 1961, part of this uh, second series. So the next one's very interesting, Hanged in Error. So at this time, hanging was about to be um, outlawed in the UK. And uh, this is a case for someone who had been hanged in error. And then this next one, which was probably published, well, it was, it was published, both published in August 1961, was Hanged by the Neck. So if you have a look, they've used the same front cover. It says Hanged by Error and Hanged by the Neck. And this one, Hanged by the Neck, actually looks at um, uh, a history of capital punishment in, in the UK. So those two sort of go together as a bit of a pair. Then 198, what's wrong with the unions? So look at the trade unions in the UK at the time. And this is uh, September 1961. And we're now very much firmly in the 60s style now for these penguin specials. 199, what's wrong with the church? And this again, penguins uh, not shying away from religious themes. And the last one to look at, Number 200, which is Persecution 1961, which obviously is 1961. And that rounds up Penguin Specials 100 to 200. So there you go, I hope you enjoy that look through these Penguin Specials. Now, the third video will be coming up in a couple of weeks' time. That's going to have a look at numbers 200 up to about 270, which is the tail end of uh, the 1960s. It'll also cover my American uh, Penguin Specials, um, as well as also some offshoots, some other wartime-related infantry journal uh, publications, um, and also some specials that were released for in hardback for uh, aircraft recognition. So uh, that's going to be in the final video, look at these specials in a couple of weeks' time. Thank you very much for watching today. Do please give it a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it, and do consider subscribing to the channel for regular vintage paperback content going forward. Thank you very much for watching again, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.